Thank you for watching this video about 20 years of God's faithfulness through your faithful support. Mission Aviation has its roots at the close of World War II when an infrastructure of airstrips around the world came into existence while at the same time, small aircraft that were economical and capable of using these airstrips were also created. Currently today, the love of Jesus is being experienced in many places worldwide from missionaries who have received qualifications and inspiration through Mission Aviation Training Academy, MATA. The gospel continues to be launched and is spreading farther and faster to remote locations. Many thousands of lives are touched and are immensely grateful that God has provided them a trained missionary or missionary pilot. God's kingdom is being greatly accelerated and increased. So, how did God bring MATA into existence, and how did He cause MATA to grow into a force for missions today? The answer is that this has all been made possible by God's faithfulness through your faithful support. Let's turn the pages of the calendar way back, even to a time before the founding of MATA in 1998. It all began when God prepared Pastor Mike and Lori Kroll by giving Mike the task of working to obtain a Doctor of Ministry degree from Faith Seminary in Washington State. Pastor Mike was also a pilot, so he chose as his theme a theoretical study of training options available for people who wish to pursue aviation ministry overseas. Mike discovered that missionary pilots were recruited from two primary sources, one from large mission schools with high overhead. These schools produced high-quality pilots, but many graduates were unable to serve for years due to high debt loads of up to $100,000 per student. The other source of missionary pilots came from small denominational or secular schools that were more economical, but resulted in many pilots who fell far short of the skills needed for the rigors and precision of mission aviation. Also, for those individuals already involved in ministry, established and inflexible academic calendars conflicted with their availability to train. God gave Mike an idea for a process that could provide high quality training with low overhead costs along with a flexible academic schedule tailored to the individual. It was then that God called the Kroll family to put these ideas into action. Mike told his wife Lori, we can do this. Lori had feelings that this step of faith was like jumping off a cliff. God impressed his calling upon her by showing a rainbow over Harvey Airfield as she drove past. A friend later related a recent dream of standing at the edge of a cliff and Jesus was there commanding them to jump. They were all wearing rainbow colored outfits and it was Jesus that was catching them at the other end. Mike shared their call with his church board and received their blessings to pursue this new ministry. Mike was a giver and intended to sacrificially give his time and talents and that the overriding goal for MATA would be to do whatever it could to assist evangelical ministries and Christians in proclaiming the way of salvation through Jesus Christ. In October 1998, without any facilities, funds, resources, or students, MATA incorporates as a non-denominational 501c3 nonprofit. We only have time to highlight a few of the hundreds of people that have had an impact on MATA over the years. For those not mentioned, we wholeheartedly thank all of you who have had a part in this ministry. Pastor Mike says we need to walk by faith, totally dependent upon God. We are grateful to Pastor Paul Nash from the very beginning. Paul credits much of MATA's continued success to the large number of dedicated prayer warriors who specifically pray for all aspects of MATA operations. God gradually brought together a high-quality three-member board of directors. The first members were Mr. LeVon Bowling, a former designer and director of the Cessna training program, Pastor Charles Martindale, a former U.S. Air Force pilot with over 150 combat missions, and Timothy Johnson, a former missionary pilot with Jungle Aviation and Radio Service, JARS. The 1999 course catalog included dozens of ambitious course offerings, including training in seaplanes, computers, amateur radio licenses, airframe and power plant, and Bible courses. Word went out and students started coming. Initially, MATA chose to begin operations through a local fixed-base operator at Arlington Municipal Airport. 
However, it quickly became apparent that MATA needed flexibility to have its own aircraft and facility to accomplish the mission God intended. Faith steps are taken to purchase a Cessna 150 and rent a tea hanger. The student doing the pre-flight in this photo is Josh Harrington. He was officially MATA's first student who started with zero experience, who later advanced all the way to Certified Flight Instructor, a CFI. Josh and his family later go on and still serve with JARS in Indonesia. Another early student is Mike and Lori's son, Jeremy, who became a CFI and pastor. Jeremy and his family later go on and still serve aviation ministry in Naknek, Alaska. God brings forward an army of faithful people who provided donations of many items, including vehicles, finances, and even weekly groceries. Many aircraft owners and corporations provide time in their own aircraft, helping MATA students build experience. Some commit to volunteer their time and skills to the ministry after hearing about MATA through mailers and presentations to local churches and ministries, including one in August with jars at a local airplane manufacturer. This event was attended by Anton Gordon Bakke. The Lord impresses upon Gordon to donate his mechanical and maintenance skills and he soon becomes Director of Maintenance. A critical part of MATA's ministry is weekly Bible studies for all students and staff, which Pastor Mike and Lori hold in their own home. A need arises for a more complex trainer, so a Mooney M20C is purchased. Pastor Mike and student Brandon Penkoff fly it from Arizona. Brandon Penkoff later goes on to serve with JARS in Cameroon, Africa for many years. Pastor Mike says the airplane is a tool to be used for spreading the gospel. Starting in January, Atonement Lutheran Church nearby to the Mata Hangers offers a small basement room as office space for the ministry. Pastor Mike accepts and commits to working full-time as the executive director for Mata. Fifteen students keep Pastor Mike, flight instructors, and maintenance workers very busy. Another task for the year involved exposing more people to MATA and finding new donors who will invest in the ministry. This included a mailing to the 700 plus members of an organization called Pilots for Christ. More than two years later, God impresses upon one recipient who held on to that mailing to donate an entire airplane to MATA. Twelve students received licenses or ratings by the end of the year. In late December, Pastor Mike coordinates a ministry trip with 11 men to build a hangar for the Lutheran Mission Society in Naknek, Alaska. Pastor Mike says, we are in a race with the clock. The next event on God's calendar is the return of Christ. We need to be about the Father's business in speeding the gospel. Additions to the MATA aircraft fleet this year include a Cessna 140, an OMF 160 Symphony, a Cessna 175, and two flight simulators. Additions to the staff include college instructor Myron Davis, certificated for inspection authorizations, and flight instructor Ben Springer, a busy medical evacuation helicopter pilot, also qualified as a fixed wing instructor for MATA. The website is upgraded by Paul Sykin and Stuart Cranick and renamed as MATA-USA.org. A young Derry Fink arrives and becomes the first student ever in the United States to have their initial solo in a symphony, and he later obtains his private pilot's license with the same aircraft. In July, Mike leads worship at the Arlington Fly-In and plans a large three-day event to raise missions awareness to challenge current and prospective students. Jesus has been represented by MATA at the Fly-In ever since. Trips are made to Oshkosh and Florida air shows to represent MATA. Unfortunately, the events of 9-11 had a big impact on MATA operations and finances, but with the generosity of God's people, by the end of the year, MATA was able to lease office space and a hangar facility from Chris and Nan Clicks. This was a blessing, but also divided operations with hangars on two opposite sides of the Arlington Airport. Mike says, we don't just believe in miracles, we depend on them. Six part-time instructors are on staff, including CFI for Instruments, Alan Koopman. Mattis starts the year with 12 students. John Lewis accomplishes his first solo and Brian Agerbrod 
trains for CFI at MATA. Brian goes on and still serves with Mission Aviation Fellowship, MAF, in Lesotho, Africa. Later in the year, Rob Marvin is approved to the board. He is one of the first people who helped Mission Aviation Fellowship in its infancy 40 years earlier. Throughout MATA history, some airplanes are purchased and leased, or assets to be sold to upgrade existing aircraft. Arrivals in 2002 include an Aronka Champ, a Cessna 150, a Cessna 172, and the first donated airplane, a Piper Arrow, which was the result of God's prompting from a mailer sent two years earlier. MATA is represented at Missions Fest Vancouver and also featured on Trinity Broadcast Network. Aircraft insurance rates skyrocket, yet God continues to provide for MATA through His people. Mike emphasizes that MATA is not a school, but a ministry that is devoted to reduce the training costs for students to obtain technical skills to better serve God's kingdom. MATA starts the year with double the airplanes and 36 students, triple from the year before. For extra income, Mike begins work as a demonstration pilot, and in the spring, his wife Lori begins full-time work for MATA as resource coordinator and administrator. Gordon Bakke flies his own Cessna 182 to Alaska to help children at Keiko Retreat Center and is impressed by God that MATA students could also benefit by ministering at Keiko. Since then, MATA has had two ministry trips to Alaska every year. Concurrent with the fly-in is a fundraising event for the Tim Johnson Memorial with a salmon barbecue and the raffle of two quilts created by ladies from Arlington First Baptist Church. $12,000 is produced, which benefits eight MATA students. These ladies have since donated many dozens of quilts. Mike says if we are unable or unwilling to share Christ at home, it is unlikely that we will be more successful overseas. Funds from the sale of a helicopter are donated to MATA. On May 1st, MATA hosts a fundraising dinner and soon creates the first Matathon fundraiser to assist Alaska Ministries. Mike says that whenever there is a crisis, there is an opportunity. Gordon finds a Project Cessna 172 that had been just sitting around unused for a number of years, but was in good condition. The owners donate a significant portion of the sales price. In May, Mike organized another missions awareness event. Amazingly, God orchestrated at the same time the visit of a Quest Kodiak at the conclusion of its debut flight for this new kind of missions aircraft. Also announced is the first ever citywide Mission Fest conference for Seattle to be held the following year. Lori joins the effort as their official prayer coordinator. MATA has been involved with Missions Fest Seattle ever since. Staff from the Arlington Fly-In invite MATA to help Kids Day as 2,500 children had already registered. MATA accepts and is given full authority to share the gospel and has done so every year since. Three children openly accept Jesus as their savior. Did you know that MATA has built many thousands of mission airplanes? Candy airplanes, which include a gospel Bible verse on the wing, are built by hundreds of children each year at the fly-in. MATA continues to enjoy amazing supernatural blessings from God, and the future appears bright when unexpectedly it is dealt a double blow and thrown into crisis. On July 27th, Mike is taken home to the Lord while piloting an airplane which crashes near Oshkosh, and on the same day, MATA board member Charles Martindale is taken home to the Lord after battling cancer. Some wonder if Maddox could even continue onward. When local media interviewed Lori, she said, Maddox won't just continue, it will explode. It will go on. On August 14th, the board vows to continue the work that God had started through Mike and selects Gordon Bakke to be approved as the acting executive director. The students continue in their work and licenses and ratings continue to be earned. There continues to be a desperate shortage of missionary pilots and laborers for God's harvest. MATA completely belongs to God and training missionary pilots has been his ministry from the very beginning. Financially, aviation is much more costly than any other mission. However, aviation has proven to be highly effective 
or the only means of reaching remote people that he deeply loves with his gospel. We are very grateful to you who have been called by God to pray, invest, and partner with us in his kingdom work. We are continually in awe as God calls volunteers, staff, and students to serve him first in his mission. God's handiwork and miracles are highly evident in day-to-day -day operations at MATA. Here are a few more highlights of God's involvement. Over the years, God calls many of his faithful servants and volunteers to staff and contribute to MATA operations or learn as interns. In June 2006, a friend mentioned the needs of MATA to Gary and Stacy Elliott. God calls them to check things out, and Gary soon becomes Director of Flight Operations and Stacy an Administrative Assistant. MATA greatly benefits from the Elliott's high qualifications and previous experience with Gary as a United States Air Force fighter pilot and their overseas aviation involvement with New Tribes mission. In 2007, Gary started a summer aviation camp for teens to introduce them to flying and missionary aviation. More than 170 teenagers have now been through the program with one or two each year who usually go on with more training to become a missionary pilot. God still provides MATA airplanes through your direct donation or from funds you donated. In one case, God overcame circumstances when $15,000 that MATA didn't have was needed to close the deal for an Apache. And amazingly, God provided full funding in only 36 hours. MATA's growth led to the lease of more hangar and office space, but eventually things demanded an even larger facility. In 2012, God provided a generous landlord and more space than imagined. God also provided people and funds to build interior office space and classrooms. In 2016, Derry Fink is called to become the new executive director. Several years earlier, Derry miraculously regained his ability to walk after being wounded and paralyzed during his service with the United States Army. In 2017, with a desire to reduce student expenses and accelerate Mission Aviation Ministry, a campaign is launched to raise $1.3 million to purchase existing academy facilities and miraculously, more than a million dollars was pledged in just a few short months. MATA has gained a highly regarded reputation that Pastor Mike envisioned with standards for top excellence in flying skills along with low costs for students. Thousands of people worldwide are benefiting from your involvement with God's training ministry here at MATA as they come to hear the gospel and are ministered to with the love of Jesus. Thank you for watching.